नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी टुडे इज गन बी सेवेंटी सेकंड Monday Sutta discussion. Tonight's uh, discussion will be uh, focusing on the Sutta called Abhijja Pubangama. This Sutta is also called Abhijja, but uh, Abhijja Pubangama could be a proper name. Abhijja Pubangama means um, Abhijja is the forerunner. Mostly we know Abhijja is a uh, forerunner, but uh, in this case, in today's case, Abhijja uh, is forerunner uh, to uh, Eightfold, noble eightfold path. So that's very interesting. So let's take a look at the sutta first. Avijja Sutta. Uh, this is in Pali. Uh, I uh, I can read uh, uh, Pali. After reading Pali, yeah, I will explain in English too. Avijja Sutta, we can call it Avijja Pubangam Sutta also. Eva me sutang ekang samayang bhagava savatyang viharati chetavani anath pindika sarami tatrako bhagava bhikkhu amantesi bhikkhavoti. This is usually uh, the normal, uh, you know, usual way of uh, saying the story of the Sutta. Which means uh, uh, <clears throat> the Buddha was staying uh, at the uh, temple uh, monastery uh, made by built by uh, Anath Pindika, uh, bank Anath Pindika, and then the Buddha addressed the monks, dear monks, and the monks replied to the Buddha, Badante, <coughs> uh, dear venerable sir. Bhagavatu Pachasusum, they replied, monks replied to the Buddha, the Venerable Sir, Bhagava is the Buddha, and then the Buddha. Uh, Bhagava is a, is a better better word rather than Buddha because this is the appellation, uh, you know, the kind of uh, name was, which was used to the Buddha in most of the, uh, you know, uh, suttas. Let's read the next uh, here. अविचा बिखरे पुब्बंगमा अकुसलानं धम्मानं समा पत्या अनुवदेव अहिरिकं अनुत्तपं अविचा गतस्स बिखरे अविदसुनो मिच्छादित्ति पहुँति मिच्छादित्ति स मिच्छा संकपो पहुँति मिच्छा संकपस मिच्छा वाचा पहुँति मिच्छा वाचस मिच्छा कामन्तु पहुँति मिच्छा कामन्तस मिच्छा जीवो पहुँति मिच्छा जीवस मिच्छा वायामो पहुँति मिच्छा वायस वाया वायामस मिच्छा साथी पहुँति मिच्छा साथी से मिच्छा समाधि पहुँति ऐसा ही ऐसा ही मेंशन एट द बिगिनिंग दिस सुत्ते इज अबाउट uh, the eightfold noble eightfold path before we get into uh, the uh, noble eightfold path i want to tell you that uh, in the suttas specifically in a couple of suttas in the majjhima nikaya we know that uh, uh, how would i say uh, there are two types of eightfold paths one is uh, ignoble uh, eightfold path uh, whereas the while the other one is a noble eightfold path so some someone might uh, uh, you know um, sort of like uh, uh, puzzle uh, what is this uh, thing called uh, you know ignoble uh, eightfold path which is, it is pretty simple it is the opposite of the noble eightfold path so let's say if you are not uh, on the path of uh, uh, you know these eight factors uh, 
which is called by Samaditi, Samavacha, Samakamanta, Samavacha, Samajiva, Samavayam, Samasati, Samadhi. These uh, eight uh, factors which we call uh, Samma, uh, you know, with Samma, that means wholesome. Uh, I would rather like to say wholesome without saying right, because right and wrong, they are pretty much, uh, you know, uh, relative to the place where you're living and relative to the cultures, uh, relative to the law. But when you talk about wholesome in English, uh, it has uh, this uh, protecting, protective and then uh, beneficial, uh, which is uh, entirely beneficial to all the beings kind of as aspect. So I would, I would like to say, I would like to understand some are to be wholesome in my understanding change from somebody else's understanding but uh, anyways so these eight with samma uh, which are called uh, noble eightfold path if somebody is not in this path that means they are definitely on the opposite uh, the opposite is ignoble uh, eightfold path right that's why buddha separately identifies uh, micha ditti micha sankappa micha vacha micha kammanta Micha Ajiva, Micha Vayam, Micha Sati, Micha Samad. Right? That's why he specifically identifies, uh, uh, recognizes uh, the opposite of uh, the, the noble, uh, you know, factors, noble, uh, you know, uh, eightfold path. And also, uh, if we, now, the, the topic itself, uh, uh, gives the same understanding that I just told you, shared with you. But if we look at different, uh, you know, exclusive suttas in the Majjhima yeah, we will find out some more details about, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, uh, surprising and very wonderful, uh, you know, teachings and, and details of uh, the Eightfold Noble Path. Noble Eightfold Path, that would be the best way of saying now, one of the very one of the very interesting suttas about uh, the noble eightfold path is Maha Chattari Sikha Sutta, which is, I guess, a hundred and seventeen sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya, uh, and I already uh, gave a talk uh, about that sutta, Maha Chattari Sikha Sutta, in twenty eighteen. If you can, uh, if you can, uh, you know, look up Maha Chattari Sutta uh, on our channel, Party Sutta YouTube channel. You will find it out and then you can, uh, uh, you know, watch that sutta as well, the discussion too. But anyways, I want to tell you that in the Mahachattari Sutta, Maha means 40 Dhamma, Dhamma factors. In that sutta, uh, it talks about 20 wholesome factors and 20 unwholesome factors, 40. Uh, but the most important thing for us, uh, which is relevant to this discussion, is what the sutta, uh, you know, uh, talks about uh, this noble eightfold path. In the Mahachattarika Sutta, it says that even the noble eightfold path is twofold. In, when you look, when you look at the noble eightfold path, it is twofold. But only up until uh, Sama Ajiva, we see that there are two, uh, you know. Uh, sections of each factor. For example, I would say Samaditi has two parts. That means mundane Samaditi uh, and then uh, transcendental Samaditi. Samma Sankapa has two, uh, two, two sections. That means mundane uh, Samma Sankapa and then uh, transcendental Samma Sankapa. I mean, this is the Noble Eightfold Path. Not, now, we already understood that there are two main uh, Eightfold paths, that is ignoble and noble. Even the noble eightfold path is twofold. Uh, now, this is what I've been explaining now. Uh, Samaditi is two, twofold. That means uh, uh, mundane samaditi, which means mundane, wholesome view, and then uh, uh, extra mundane or transcendental samaditi. And then sankappa, uh, mundane samma sankappa, and the transcendental samma sankappa. Sama, sama Sankapa, Sama Vacha, Mandin Sama Vacha, and then Transcendent Sama Vacha, Sama Diti Sama Sankapa, Sama Vacha, Sama Kamand, 
sub, uh, mundane sama kamanta and transcend into sama kamanta sama uh, ajiva uh, transcendental, uh, sorry, mundane uh, sama ajiva and transcendental sama ajiva. The rest is same. Vayama, sati, samadhi, which, which is pretty common too. Uh, the both mundane and transcendental <coughs> sections. Why there is a difference between uh, the first seven uh, factors of, uh, you know, uh, noble fourth pan when it comes to this sutta? Buddha says, uh, a normal putajana like us. Now, there are two types of putajanas in the Buddhist teachings. Andaputujana uh, and Kalyana putujana. Andaputujana is the person who does not uh, <clears throat> uh, sees uh, oneself and outside, uh, you know, with Panchakkhanda, uh, Shadayatanas, or, or the other Sayatanas, and 18 elements based on those things. Uh, that person does not uh, make his perspective. But uh, when it comes to Kalyana Putuchana, this person always looks at everything, every phenomenon, uh, people, oneself, everything based on Panchakkan, the five aggregates, uh, Dwada Sayatana's 12 uh, sense bases, and 18 elements which call Attara Siddhartha So that's the Kalyana Putuchana. So Putuchana, wordling also is twofold. So the thing is, when it comes to Mahachattarik Sutta uh, analysis about the eightfold, uh, Noble Eightfold Path, Buddha says that in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the analysis that, in, in the analysis, there are two, two individuals who, uh, you know, walk through uh, the path. One is a Kalyana Putujana, the other one is a Arya Savaka, which is, which is most probably uh, an Arhat. So let's say uh, the mundane parts are being mundane parts are, you know, being fulfilled by uh, uh, Kalyana Putujana, uh, while uh, the transcendental parts of the uh, you know, noble eightfold path fulfilled by an Arha who already attained Nibbana. So it's, it's pretty interesting. So the reason why I want to share with you this particular sutta, in addition to the sutta that we are talking today, is that we we, we should understand. Uh, that too. So I will get into that after reading the whole sutta uh, and, and the meaning of the sutta that uh, we are supposed to talk today. So let's uh, get back to the sutta. Okay, so the meaning. Take it. Let's go to the English. Translation, ignorance. Okay, hope you can see. Okay, ignorance, avijja. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the blessed one was dwelling at Savati in Jeta's Grove, another Pindigas Park. They are the blessed one addressed the because that's because when the sir, those because reply, the blessed one said this because monks, ignorance or avijja is the forerunner of sorry, forerunner in the entry upon wholesome states. Now, sorry, unwholesome states with shamelessness and fearlessness of wrongdoing following along. Okay, now what does it say? Buddha says that. Uh, the forerunner of all the unwholesome states is ignorance. Now we know we have seen, uh, we have, we may have experienced a lot of unwholesome states, akusalas, uh, which includes the uh, ignoble, which which exactly includes the ignoble, uh, ignoble uh, uh, eightfold path. So, so the forerunner of that ignoble ignoble eightfold path is avicca ignorance, with Two important, uh, you know, uh, motivators, uh, which really uh, take us into the unwholesome states. What are they? Shamelessness and fearlessness of wrongdoing, which means ahirika anottappa. Now, what is ahirika and anottappa? Ahirika and anottappa means they are the uh, 
the most important dharmas that the Buddhism talks about when it comes to the, dis the decisive part of fulfilling kusala or akusala uh, uh, to any individual. Let's say that uh, I'm really good, but when I when I face a craving, a food craving, then what happens? Uh, the sort of perspective, mentali mentality uh, in which how I'm trying to, you know, encounter this food craving, mostly, uh, you know, a struggle by either uh, hiri or ottapa, the wholesome parts, or ahirika ottapa. Let's say if I if I do not care uh, the craving, uh, but if I if I care the craving, right? If I do not care the craving, if I care the craving, which means if I if I understand uh, harmful, you know, uh, you know harmful, you know, uh, outcomes of this particular craving, which means I am really into, uh, you know. Uh, you know, moral shame, which means uh, hiri, and otapa means a moral fear, because I, 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 I understand through those two. But if somebody is going to, uh, you know, deal the situation, the same food craving this way, I don't care. I'm not shameful. You know, I'm not shy. I'm not shameful. I just do whatever I want, even with this food craving, and I'm not, uh, you know, scared. I'm not feared at you know, this food cravings, food, food cravings. So which means hiri or tapa, which means the wholesome parts of the motivation, or ahirika no tapa, which are the, uh, uh, you know, un so unwholesome parts of, uh, you know, uh, the particular activity, they are very important. Now, when avicca is uh, influencing, impacting somebody who is on the ignoble uh, eightfold path, uh, with avicca, there are two uh, motivators uh, for someone to execute the unwholesome states. They are called ahirika and anutta, which means uh, that person has no moral shame, uh, as well as that person has no uh, moral fear towards a particular unwholesome state for uh, not executing uh, that particular thing. But uh, that person is a morally, uh, you know, not shameful and morally not feared, so he's gonna do the bad thing, right? So in the sutra, it, it says that uh, because ignorance is the forerunner in the entry upon unwholesome states with shamelessness and fearlessness of wrongdoing, following mm -hmm. along. So it, it continues, but up to this point, what we can understand is that because of ignorance with shamelessness, ahirika, uh, and fearlessness, anottap, a person is going to can a person is going to uh, start uh, this particular unwholesome journey towards uh, the other rest of the ignoble uh, factors uh, of the path. Okay, let's take a look at other rest. For an unwise person immersed in ignorance. Now we know the particular person who is going to be shameless and fearless with avicca, it's, this person is not a wise person, not a sappurisa, not a uh, panyavanta, right? This person is an unwise person. So this person is immersed uh, in ignorance avicca. Then what happens to that person? Wrong view springs up, okay? which means michaditi. Uh, Micha uh, you know, uh, springs up. So in him, uh, in him we can see uh, Micha So Micha arises because of this avicca uh, with Hirika uh, and Anottapta. And then for one of wrong view, Micha wrong intention springs up because of uh, wrong uh, view. Then what happens? What happens? Uh, Micha Sankhapa arises, springs up. For one of wrong intention, uh, which means some, uh, sorry, Micha Sankhapa, wrong speech springs up. That means Micha Vacha, uh, 
uh, wrong speech springs up, arises. For one of wrong speech, because of the uh, you know uh, wrong speech, micha vacha, wrong action springs up. Uh, that means micha kamant. For one of wrong action, which means micha kamant, wrong livelihood springs up, which means micha ajiva arises. So, which means each thing is conditioned, right? Each factor is conditioned because in Buddhism, uh, uh, we have a concept that we all uh, always, uh, you know, discuss in the past discussions. We call it pachas, conditioning, conditionalities. So, conditionality is a is a uh, teaching that you can learn in the Patana Prakarana. So, there are twenty four conditionalities in the Abhidhamma, uh, wherein which we understand that. Um, the, the conditionality between uh, the good factors and the bad factors. For example, I would say, uh, uh, I would say, uh, you know, between each uh, factors of uh, noble equal path or ignoble uh, equal path or panchakanda or whatever the Mahabhuta Rupas, if you see a set of Dhamma factors or Dhamma factors, you should also, you know, uh, understand that there is this conditionality con uh, concept. Conditionality, uh, pachya, uh, can come in different ways. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be anya manya sahajata, which means mutually, uh, mutually uh, born, uh, or uh, it could be different. So it could be uh, rooted. That means hetu mulaka, right? So pachyas are twenty-four four, right? So in here. Even between each micha, uh, which you call wrong, uh, uh, you know, eightfold path, each between each factor, uh, you have to understand there is a conditionality uh, as well as uh, in the uh, normal eightfold path. Okay, for one of wrong livelihood because of micha ajiva, wrong effort springs up, which means micha uh, vayama rises, springs up. For one of wrong effort, micha ajiva, wrong mindfulness springs up, which means micha sati uh, arises. For one of wrong mindfulness, micha sati, wrong concentration springs up, which means uh, micha samadhi springs up. Now, uh, dumb friends, you need to understand that, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, Eightfold, uh, you know, factors. They are, they, they can be used uh, in a, you know, in, in a negative way, right? Now, even if you take uh, mindfulness, even if you take concentration, even if you take effort, even if you take um, any other factor, you can use them in a negative way, in an unwholesome way. So that's why I was trying to say uh, that uh, if you are not practicing noble eightfold path, which uh, means that you are practicing the opposite. That means ignoble uh, eightfold path. Uh, maybe you might uh, be doing some of the uh, noble eightfold path, but uh, you might perhaps uh, be doing uh, the rest of the uh, factors, uh, you know, from the ignoble. That's why we have to particularly understand what these factors are. Uh, we will be doing that, uh, you know, after this. Uh, but first, let me read uh, in Pali and English, and then we will be talking uh, more about uh, what these uh, uh, individual factors are with Mahachattari, second so few other suttas. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Let's go to the uh, Pali uh, Pali text of uh, once again to read the. To read the uh, the last paragraph, which now this is the positive part. Now this part is about uh, ignorance and ignoble eightfold path. But this part is about vijja. The opposite of avijja is vijja, uh, which is what we really want to uh, you know become, right? Vijja, uh, and then the positive that means the nob noble eightfold path. Vijja ko bikkave. Pubangama kusalana dhammanam samapatya. 
So vijja is mostly translated uh, as uh, true knowledge, uh, which is the opposite of ignorance. Anvadeva hirottappan vijja gatasa bhikkave vidyasuno sammaditi pahoti. Now you can understand that uh, in the same way, uh, just as we saw in the previous section about the uh, ignoble eightfold path. Now it uh, it uh, is explained the same way. Samadhi sa samma sankapu pahoti, samma sankapa sa samma vacha pahoti, samma vacha sa samma kamantu pahoti, samma kamanta sa samma ajivu pahoti, samma ajiva sa samma vayamu pahoti, samma vayama sa samma samma sati pahoti, samma sati sa samma samadhi pahoti, which is exactly the opposite of this paragraph. And then how one uh, who has the true knowledge continues with the a noble eightfold path. Now, in this para, it, it is about the ignoble eightfold path. In this path, part, uh, it talks about the no, uh, noble eightfold path. Now, let's take uh, a look at the English translation so that we will understand it uh, more elaboratively. Okay, you can see. Okay, because true knowledge, now this is what we call vijja. Now, ignorance is avijja, right? The opposite of ignorance is true knowledge, which you call vijja. This is what we really want to attain. Now, we say because of avijja, we are in the sansara, we need to stop the sansara, end the sansara. And then when we look at the reason, cause of why we are in the sansara, then we understand it is avijja or ignorance. But then, if we are, if we achieve, if we if we get to this point, which is called true knowledge, true knowledge, that means the end of sansara, and then we have all these things. So, because monks, true knowledge is the forerunner in the entry upon wholesome states. Now, even in the uh, secular life, mundane life, uh, we have to understand that. If we even understand the true knowledge by definition, by interpretation, uh, that always helps us to execute wholesome states. But in here, it is different than in here. Now, in here, we saw with avicca what uh, usually op what usually functions uh, is, is shamelessness and fearlessness, which means ahirika no tapa. But with the true knowledge, what operates? It is with a sense of shame and fear of wrongdoing, which means moral shame and moral fear. Every a person who is all, who is into true knowledge, uh, even attain the attain nibbana and then uh, understood uh, and, and and equip with the true knowledge, or someone who is already trying to be on the sotapanna or already the sotapanna, they have this sense of shame, moral shame or fear of wrongdoing or uh, moral fear about uh, uh, you know executing doing bad things when someone has true knowledge that will be the forerunner of that person's uh, fulfilling executing of wholesome states kusala comes right and then what happens for a wise person this particular person is called a wise person sappurisa panyavanta who has arrived at true knowledge which means vijja not avijja vijja right view springs up uh, you know i i call it wholesome view but uh, i go by the translation of the bhikkhu bodhi at this point so right view springs up that means samadhi arises in that person for one of right view uh, which means uh, right intention springs up because of right view samadhi uh, in that person uh, samasanka arises right intention for one of right intention uh, someone who has uh, samma sankappa, right speech springs up, uh, samma vacha arises. For one of right speech, right action springs up because of uh, right speech, samma vacha, then uh, samma kamant arises. For one of right action, uh, the one who has right action, samma kamant, right livelihood springs up, uh, that means samma ajiva springs up, arises. For one of right livelihood, someone who has right livelihood, someone ajiva, right effort uh, springs up. 
which means samma vayama, for one of right effort, uh, uh, the one who has right effort, samma vayama, right mindfulness brings up. Samma uh, sati arises in that person, for one of right mindfulness, someone who has samma sati, right concentration springs up, which means samma samadhi uh, springs up or arises in that person at that point. Now, you can particularly understand that uh, uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, factors, uh, components uh, uh, of Noble Eightfold Path, they are also conditioned uh, each other because of vicha. Because of vicha, true knowledge, with the rest of the factors, they are conditioned because of that, uh, with uh, hiri and not tapa. Now you understand this particular reason there is a cause for uh, ignoble uh, eightfold path which is the which is what we understand by avicca with ahirika noktappa moral uh, lack of moral shame and lack of moral fear when it comes to uh, noble eightfold path we know there is a cause that is uh, vicha true knowledge with hiri and noktappa which means uh, moral shame and moral fear and each factor in the both paths, they are conditioned uh, because of the first uh, type of course. But there's no first course, but they are conditioned. In Buddhism, everything is conditioned. There, there are no independent Dharma factors according to the Abhidharma. Now, I want to talk about uh, Eightfold Path. I, I would say uh, Eightfold Path uh, from uh, this sutta called Mahachatta Arisaka Sutta because that is the kind of a best analysis about the Eightfold Noble Path. But before I uh, get into Mahachatta Risaka Sutta, there is another sutta I want to share with you. This sutta is called Chulavedala Sutta. In that sutta, Buddha clearly recognizes that Eightfold no Noble Eightfold Path is nothing but the elimination of Sakkayadity. You want to uh, take a look? Let's take a look. Because people think how they can connect uh, Sakkaya Ditti with Eightfold Noble Path. Buddha says, Eightfold Noble Path is nothing but the elimination of Sakkaya Ditti. Let's take a look. It's going to be uh, the shorter classification. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is Chulavedala Sutta, which is the 44th Sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya. Let me find out that place. Okay, okay. Can you see here? Madam, now this is a discussion between Visaka and Dhammadina, right? Uh, but uh, Buddha approved everything at the end. Ma'am, they speak of this thing called the cessation of identity, Sakha identity. What is the cessation of identity that the Buddha spoke of. So what is the uh, cessation? What is the ending of the Sakkaya Ditti? It is the fading away and cessation of that very same craving with nothing left over, giving it away, letting it go, releasing it, and not adhering to it. The Buddha said that this is the cessation of identity. Ma'am, they speak of the practice that leads to the cessation of identity. What is the practice that leads to the cessation of identity that the Buddha spoke of? Okay. Now, here is the, uh, the game changer. <laughs> the practice that leads to the cessation of identity, which means Sakkaya Ditti, that the Buddha spoke of is simply this noble eightfold path. Now, take a look. Which means, which clearly means the Noble Eightfold Path is nothing but the elimination of Sakkaya Ditti in the first place. That's what we can see in the Chula Vedala Sutta, the 44th Sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya. Uh, so uh, if you are kind of puzzled, what is Sakkaya Ditti, the relationship of Sakkaya Ditti to Eightfold Noble Path, uh, it's nothing but uh, the process itself, 
uh, the particular teaching called Noble Eightfold Path teaching itself is the elimination of the Sakha identity. We'll uh, read a few other things to, uh, you know, understand some uh, more insights. Okay, and that is right view, right thought, right speed, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right immersion, which is concentration. But ma'am, is that, okay, now this is about Sakha Aditi, okay, I mean, which is not uh, our focus today. And then they talk about what is Sakha Aditi. And Dhamma friends, I want to show you something else too. Okay, in here. But ma'am, what is the Noble Eightfold Pan? It's simply this Noble Eightfold Path, this, that's the same thing. But man, is the Noble Eightfold Path conditioned or unconditioned? I know, I already told you it's conditioned. The Noble Eightfold Path is conditioned. There's no path which is unconditioned in the Buddhist teaching. Now, this is again uh, giving us another uh, insight of the, uh, you know, the context or contents of the uh, Noble Eightfold Path, which is pretty interesting. Are the three practice categories included in the Noble Eightfold Path or is the Noble Eightfold Path included in the three practice categories? Now, uh, uh, most of you may have listened to this. You know, uh, the, the Noble Eightfold Path has uh, been categorized, classified into three section disciplines. Sila, Samadhi, Panya. Now, uh, the question which is raised by, uh, uh, you know, Visaka is that uh, uh, is the eightfold no is the noble eightfold part included in the three disciplines which you call Siddha Samadhi Panya or uh, uh, or Siddha Samadhi Panya, which means three disciplines are included in the uh, noble eightfold path. Let's take a look. The answer is Eightfold Noble Path is included in the three sections called, three disciplines called Sila Samadhi Panya. Uh, Sila Samadhi Panya is not included in the uh, Noble Eightfold Path, which means Sila Samadhi Panya are the most important disciplines, uh, important things here, because I mean, which is pretty uh, common to all of us. Uh, Whenever you listen to a Dharma talk, all the monks and uh, speakers, uh, you know, say that uh, Sila Samadhi Panya, this, this is our disciplinary uh, perspective. One has to be moral, virtuous. One has to then uh, also practice Samadhi and one has to then attain this Panya, right? So let's take a look at how it was given in the Sutta. Let's see. Uh, the three practice categories, which means three disciplines, three, six, uh, which you call uh, uh, Trisiksha included in the Noble Eightfold Path, or is the Noble Eightfold Path, Aryasthayaka Marga, Aryatthana Marga, included in the three practice categories? The three practice categories, which means Sila Samadhi Panya, are not included in the Noble Eightfold Path. See, they are not included in the Noble Eightfold Path. Rather, the Noble Eightfold Path is included in the three practice categories, which means now here, the most important teaching is Sila Samadhi Panya, but not the Noble uh, Eightfold Path, but the Noble Eightfold Path is part of, is inclusive inside, inclusive inside the uh, Sila Samadhi Panya. Now see how it was uh, categorized. Right speech, Sama uh, Vacha, right action, Sama Kamanta, and right livelihood, which means uh, Sama Ajiva, they are, these things are included in the category of ethics, which means sila. So, uh, sama vacha, sama kamata, sama ajiva, they are included in the sila, which means the first discipline. And right effort, right mindfulness, and right, I would say, concentration. Sama vayama, sama sati, sama samadhi, they are included in the concentration. But the most important thing, right view and right thought, the first two parts, these things are included in the wisdom, the category of wisdom, panya, right? So uh, let me, uh, 
let me get back to this point now you can understand uh, when you look at uh, a, a noble equal pair uh, this the, the 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 factors of the noble equal pair have been categorized into three parts uh, they are sila samadhi panya tisikka uh, so uh, first we have to uh, start with panya uh, because samadhi uh, tisama sankapa because if you, if you don't have the right i would, I would say wholesome view and sama sankapa wholesome thought you will not be able to fulfill uh, the speech uh, i would say not speech uh, the sila and samadhi part right so you have to first have this samadhi t and then sama sankapa so these two are parts of the wisdom uh, so we need sort of wisdom to start with and then sama vacha kamanta ajiva they are which means uh, you know wholesome speech wholesome action wholesome uh, living they are part of our seal right our morality our virtue right so we need to work on uh, those two sections uh, to fulfill our seal and then sama vayama samma sati samma samadhi wholesome um, effort uh, and then samma sati wholesome mindfulness and samma samadhi wholesome concentration they are part of our samadhi so we need samadhi which which means calmness uh, right so the most important thing here is to start the noble eight four path with samma ditti uh, so this is very interesting because if we really want to uh, you know achieve this true knowledge which is called vicha we have to start with samma ditti which is called uh, wholesome view that's why in one of the suttas called samma ditti which is a very prominent sutta suttas uh, we understand that samma ditti is the most interesting important part of this noble eightfold path uh, you know uh, except uh, apart from that sila samadhi panya teaching now let's uh, get into the uh, you know uh, the factors of the noble eightfold path uh, so we had to go into mahachattarika sutta which is the uh, 117 sutta in the majjhimika i to take a look Yes, uh, it's this one. Okay, let's take a look. The great forty. Uh, there, uh, we can understand that there are forty, uh, twenty wholesome factors and twenty unwholesome factors. there in bikkhu's right view samma ditti comes first now you need to understand that samma ditti is very important because it comes first right and how does right view come first one understands wrong view as wrong view and right view as right view this is one's right view what is this uh, you know understanding uh, you know by separating out uh, kind of unspecific things now if um if someone uh, uh specifically separates out akusala from kusala kusala from akusala this is this kind of samadhi uh, this is the starting point this is the beginning of samadhi that's why it's the uh, forerunner here and what because is wrong view ah uh, let's take a look at a wrong view what is wrong with michaditi there is nothing given nothing offered nothing sacrificed no fruit or result of good and bad actions no this world no other world no mother no father no beings who are reborn spontaneously no good and virtuous recluses and brahmins in the world who have realized for themselves by direct knowledge and declare this world and the other world this is wrong you know there are 10 things uh, which includes the michaditi now there is nothing given people who are into wrong view already they don't believe in dana generosity they don't believe in offering they don't believe in giving things to other people right 
And not even that, they don't believe in the uh, karma concept. Uh, and this is very interesting. They don't believe uh, they don't believe mother and father. They, to, for them, mother is not a special person. Father is not a special person. But for us, people who uh, have some mud, I'm not trying to brag. Uh, for, for, for people who are watching this, who are really serious about their practice, for us, our mother, our father is a special person. So we are taking care of them. If, if they die, if, they, if they're already dead, uh, we need to transfer good karma. So, so that it's a part of our samadhi. Okay, so one of the things of Michaditi is that. And then, and what bhikkhus is right view, right view Samaditi, I say is twofold, uh, which is what I told you. There's right view that is affected by asavas, things, partaking of merits, ripening in the acquisitions, and there's right view that's noble, taintless, anasava, supramundane, a factor of the pan. So, uh, Dhamma friends, what it means is, uh, as I told you, even the Noble, eight, oh, noble Eightfold Path uh, from the first, uh, I would say, uh, from the first factor, which you call Samaditi, Apanti Samajiva, we can see uh, a two way uh, of, uh, you know, uh, practicing of Samaditi, Samaditi, Samasankapa, Samavacha, Kamanta, Jiva, Vayam. I'm sorry, until Ajiva. So why am Sati Samadhi? They are pretty uh, sane to uh, mundane people and uh, transcendental, extra mundane, super mundane, uh, uh, you know, individuals. So now, uh, if you practice uh, Samadhi and all these, uh, you know, eight, uh, mostly uh, you are practicing with asavas, which means uh, what you call cankers or defilements, but still you are practicing a noble eightfold path as a putujjana, right? Uh, but I want to tell you uh, that uh, arahants, they practice another two at the end, which means for arahants, this no eightfold, noble eightfold path becomes a uh, noble tenfold path, which is called sammanyana, sammavimutti. They come at the end. Sammanyana means uh, uh, wholesome knowledge, True knowledge in other sense and uh samavimukti is wholesome release liberation so they are exclusively for the arahans so uh so and we have to say that uh, uh, the person who is going through the uh, you know eight i would say uh, noble eightfold path uh, there are two uh, people the first person is a putujjana he goes uh with mundane uh, samaditi, mundane samma sankappa, vacha, kammanta, ajiva, vayama sati samadhi, and the other person is an arahan, uh, which you call arya savaka. So this particular person is already an arahan. So this person uh, again reflects and uh, you know uh, continues their journey until they uh, die with their anupadi sesa nibbana dhatu. So uh, there are two uh, persons, that's why Normally, full path is twofold, but there are two more uh, path factors uh, that are usually performed by uh, arahants. They are called sama jnana, sama vimut, which means wholesome. What do you call it? wholesome uh, knowledge, and then wholesome liberation or release. And now, the other interesting thing is somebody be asked, how can we practice these uh, eight? Uh, you know, uh, eight factors in the noble eightfold path. Should I first start with samaditi and then samma sankapas, then samma vacha, then kammanta? No, you have to practice all the factors simultaneously. But you have to start with samaditi, wholesome view or right view. But in your day to day life, you have to practice these eight factors simultaneously at the same time. Try to practice. Uh, Sankapa all the time, try to practice vacha all the time, kamanta, aji, vayam, sati, samadhi. Don't think that I'm going to practice sati for this week and then samadhi, and in two more weeks I'm going to practice vacha. <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, it works when you practice uh, the eight uh, noble eight uh, four path uh, simultaneously as much as you can. And there's no gender issue, so uh, it's, uh, uh, you know. Uh, 
there is no gender problem discrimination. Everybody can practice. Uh, those who really understand what uh, this is all about. Let me go uh, again to the Chattari Sakha Sutta. If there is something that we want to uh, specifically, uh, you know, uh, take a look. Okay, somebody may ask, I should better, uh, you know, explain, uh, you know, these are, uh, these are uh, eight, eight factors in short. So Samaditi, So samaditi basically means that uh, you have the kamasakata nyan, which means you understand kusala and akusala, and you know uh, and 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 an understanding about the vipakas of kusala and akusala. Uh, so in that case, uh, we all have uh, samaditi, but we have to continue with that perspective. Sometimes, uh, uh, at the face of uh, a negative, bad uh, thing, you might perhaps uh, get out of that uh, interesting and wholesome perspective so uh, you know be careful second is sama sankapa sama sankapa basically means uh, thoughts uh, with uh, renunciation uh, uh, renunci thoughts of renunciation uh, thoughts um, on uh, uh, not thoughts thoughts on thoughts on not ki not killing i would say uh, uh, yeah, thought which you call uh, thoughts uh, thoughts of not destroying other people other beings and uh, uh, avihinsa uh, that means thoughts of uh, not harassing other individual other beings even oneself right we should not uh, torture us we should not uh, self sabotage right some people they want to take revenge of oneself when they feel uncomfortable when they uh, get defeated right Samasankapa, which means we have to practice uh, thoughts of uh, renouncing, letting go, right? Now, if you take a look at of your uh, day, think, just uh, take a look uh, uh, in a normal sense, right? Uh, what kind of thoughts that, that, that pop up in your mind? Are, are those thoughts uh, really letting you go? Uh, or are those thoughts really, uh, uh, you know, uh, blocking you to certain uh, cravings, right? So there's no renunciation. Try to try to uh, create, try to make thoughts of renunciation or letting go. Renunciation is a bigger concept. And also the thoughts of uh, not destroying other people, even on social media, even uh, doing anything uh, harmful to other beings, including you, and not harassing other people, thoughts of not harassing other people. That is Sama Sankapa. Sama Vacha is basically um, avoiding the bad speech. I would say lying, slandering, or uh, talking behind the back, uh, talking hurtful words, and not becoming an idle chatter or a gossip. So if you are good if you are not uh, making that kind of a bad speech. And uh, what else? Sama Vacha. Sama Kamandha, which means uh, your right actions, wholesome action. That means. Uh, uh, you need to avoid killing, uh, stealing, and uh, misbehaving. Uh, basically, uh, here it means uh, sexual misconduct. Sama kaman. Sama ajiva means uh, it's not just uh, avoiding certain type of jobs. Some people, uh, uh, you know, interpret uh, this as avoiding certain jobs. It's not because I don't think people make job choices when they are, uh, uh, you know, reaching out to this this section. Uh, it's basically uh, avoiding uh, hypocrisy, uh, some bad ways of earning, swindling, cheating other people. This is what it calls. So if you doing a job uh, by which you are swindling, you are cheating other people, that is not Samajiva. So try to uh, have a job. Or if you are cheating, if you are swindling other people uh, unintentionally as well, try to uh, uh, make it to a point where you are not cheating, where you are not swindling other people. That is Samajiv. Samavayam is fourfold, which means, uh, you know, wholesome effort. Uh, how would I say? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, putting effort in developing your existing Kusala Kammas. Like you may already have Kusala Kammas. You have to put effort to develop, increase your Kusala Kammas. Uh, putting effort uh, to develop uh, 
put, putting effort to uh, practice uh, kusala kamas that you see in other people, uh, which uh, you may not have as a second way of uh, practicing samma vayama or uh, wholesome effort and putting effort to reduce your akusala kamas, akusala activities uh, and uh, putting effort uh, uh, putting effort not to uh, uh, you know uh, execute any akusala kamas that you may not have but you think you may be uh, influence uh, because of uh, the company of the bad people of society. So you are not letting them come on your way because you are trying to put effort uh, to push uh, those Aksala uh, people uh, or Aksala uh, Kamas from your life. So those are the four ways of uh, practicing Sammavaya. Sammasati basically means uh, that you are trying to practice the four uh, Four ways of uh, satipatthanas, you know, kaya pasana, vedana pasana, chitta pasana, dhamma pasana. So you can practice mindfulness based on your body. You can practice mindfulness based on your feelings, which means vedana pasana. You can practice mindfulness based on your sixteen type of thoughts, which you call chitta pasana. You can practice mindfulness based on dhamma pasana, which 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 you mean uh, which you mean by um, mind. Uh, elements so and so forth so you can practice mindfulness in different ways samadhi means uh there are different definitions they say uh it is the jhanas uh, the attainment of jhanas on the other hand i would say kusala chitta ekakata samadhi that means if your mind is taking an object uh, based on the kusala if you can keep that mind if you can keep that mind uh and your chetasikas on that particular kusala thought that is what we call samadhi kusala chitta seka kata samadhi uh, so samadhi only arises when you are focusing on a kusala thought uh, some people might say i have samadhi when i'm doing my studying i'm listening to my radio and then i'm doing so that is not samadhi that could be a focusing kind of a focusing but samadhi basically means if you uh focusing on a kusala thought and at the same time if your mind is you know quietening that is samadhi okay so this is what we call the noble eightfold path so please uh you know uh, uh you know uh, uh increase your efforts in leveraging in uh, you know in uh, in developing your practice so that you will uh you know experience uh you know uh lot of benefits uh, uh you know in practicing the normal eightfold path and i think that's uh, all that i think i wanted to share with you about this topic so now you can understand what is the ignoble eightfold path and what is the noble eightfold path ignoble eightfold path means the opposite of the noble eightfold path even the noble eightfold path is twofold uh, which, uh, which goes by mundane and ex uh, extra mundane or transcendent Okay, let me see any questions under comments. Okay, let me see. I don't think there are any questions for today. So, thank you. So, let's share all the good karmas with the departed relatives and the uh, devas and others. May all the good karmas we've been uh, accumulating in all these ways be shared by all the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of us. May they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayu. Idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayu. Let's share all the good karmas with the, uh, with the devas and the nagas who protect all of us. May the devas and nagas uh, partake in all these good karmas we've been accumulating so far. May they speed up their journey, spiritual journey, uh, to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ittavatach ammihi sambatang punya sampadang 
सबे देवा अनुमोदन तो सबे भूता अनुमोदन तो सबे सत्ता अनुमोदन तो सब संपत्ति से दिया आंका सत्ता चुम मत्था देवा नागा महिं दिखा पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित वा चिरं रक्षं तुलु कसासनं चिरं रक्षं तुले सनं चिरं रक्षं तुमं परंते Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating since the uh, beginning of this sort of discussion about the most uh, interesting, most important this uh, topic in our uh, you know Buddhist life, which is of course a uh, noble eightfold path, uh, cause all of us to uh, you know attain the supreme bliss of nibbana as well. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. अभिवादन सीलिस निच्छं बंधा पचायनु चत्तारु धम्मा वधन्ति आयु अनु सुखं बलं आयुरारोग्य संपत्ति संत संपत्ति में वच अतो निब्बान संपत्ति इमिनाति समिंजतु सालु 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 Before I close, I wanna give you an announcement in 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 uh, upcoming uh, Wednesday's uh, Abhidhamma discussion, I will be talking about karma sobhana chittas. So there are twenty four karma sobhana chittas, which you call uh, beautiful uh, chittas, uh, sobhana chittas. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, you will learn a lot uh, and uh, stay tuned for the discussion too. So stay safe and uh, uh, have a very uh, good day for all of you who are. Asia and have a very good evening. Good night to the people who are with us here. Thank you.